day one of Reading Festival 2015 and I'm here with Chuck and Sebastian. Now, when was the last time you were at Reading Festival? We've never been at Reading Festival. Can you believe that? It's our first time. First Virgins. Time. You were meant to be one year though, weren't yeah, you? Twice, I think. twice, yeah. Uh, and uh, we had like the most bad luck. It's unbelievable. Like one time Pierre, our singer, lost his voice. Some other time he had like a, like a guy in the band had an accident couldn't make it to the show. It was kind of like, it's been like everything in the world has conspired for us not to play this festival. Yeah. And, and it's such a, you know, amazing and huge thing that we heard about since we were kids and finally we're here playing it so we're stoked it's about time hopefully the curse has been lifted well it has we're so here good. Yeah. Yeah. you've arrived we've made it yes yeah. we have made it nobody's injured everybody is in good uh, in good spirits we're stoked to be here it's a beautiful day so what else can you ask for good. Now, awesome your performance is until later this evening about nine something so that's true yes yeah, so what do you like to do in the run-up to that performance in an ideal world if you didn't have to do interviews and press and all that stuff. Well the best thing about these festivals is to see all the all the really good bands that we love you know so we're on at 9.30 so Mumford and Sons on at 9.30 and then Limb Biscuits on at 9.30 <laughs> so basically we're not going to see a lot of people no we'll get to see all time low we'll get to see Panic at the Disco panic. it's going to be awesome uh, I think Neck Deep's on right now yeah. So we'll catch, them, we'll catch them right after this, yeah. and uh, New Pongori obviously after us. But that, that's the whole part of these festivals, to watch the bands and have a good time. Yeah, just kind of take it all in and just see what it's all about, you know what I mean? Like we've been, we've heard so much about it, so we're just happy to finally be here and doing it. When you're at festivals like this and on Warped, are you watching like the younger bands and thinking, okay, they might be good to take on tour, we might be able to learn about something from them? Are you always looking and observing? And Absolutely, you know, we like to find out who the competition is and make sure we like sort of squash them you know, before they get too big, you know, and take our spots. Like, no, it's true, like we're always trying to, to make sense of the new bands and the new music that's coming up, so we go and cut their strings and mess up their equipment. Sabotage. You know, unplug the amps. No, you know what, it's actually, it's, it's, I think what's the coolest thing about being a band is that it keeps you really, um, like, you have to be to stay current and be on the pulse and know what's going on. So for me, one of my favorite parts about playing festivals, like you can have a chance to see some awesome new bands that are coming up and you know, you you go check them out. It's not really that, it, it's awesome to take them on tour and everything, but also just to see what's what's going on, what, yeah. what people are liking, what how do they sound live, how do they do their show. And Hear new music. You yeah. can always learn. I think like the, the moment you think you got it all figured out, that's when you start to suck. So I think for us, we're always students of, Every band that we watch, you know, whether they're small or big or massive or whatever, you can always take something from that, you know? It's a good attitude to have. It is. Chuck generally has a very, very good attitude in life in general, yeah. Yes, thank you, Sebastian. Now, Boom is one of the catchiest songs I've heard in yes. a while. Now, how do you dark guys do that? Because I was watching a montage from your Amsterdam show on YouTube yesterday, and every song is catchy as hell. What is yeah. the knack? How do you do it? That's our thing, you know. We That's just our want, trademark. Yeah, yeah, I guess we, you know, when we when we write an album, we just want to write, you know, the songs that we'd love to listen to, you know. And we're fans of very catchy music, apparently. It's all like, you know, for us, it's it all starts with with, with the melody, and 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 the hook, and you know. Uh, Obviously the lyrics are really important, but like that's how you shape your melody. Like we we usually start with like a, an idea for a title or, or a lyric and then we try to sing that in the catchiest, most like most melodic way possible. And you know, we grew up on like the Beatles and Elvis Costello and Cheap Trick and all the punk rock bands from California. So when you mix that in that it you know, it sort of becomes simple plan, you know. It's like it's it's always been about having you know, it's like pop song but turn to 10 and kind of like turn to 11 like on steroids that's you know? right yeah to 11 not 10 now how do you know when it's catchy do you do you have like catchy testers that you play it to your mate i don't know fred and he goes that's a catchy one or do you know yourselves that that's a catchy melody what's the test the litmus test for a catchy melody i think a bit of both you know we play it to people around us and like try to figure out what's their favorite songs and usually Usually we can tell ahead of time which one's going to be everybody's favorite, you know? The big thing for me is like to know if a song, because there's, there's a line, right? There's like a line of oh, like yeah. awesome, amazing, catchy, and then like 
annoying, not good, catchy. Yes. So yeah, it goes like this, and then it's like good song, great song, catchy, super annoying, super good. <laughs> so like it sort of splits out towards the end there. So the way to do it for me is like it, it can't just be catchy. It has to make you feel something in your gut. You know what I mean? Like you have to like it's it's our song. I always feel like they're not. Sh I mean the aim or that what we try to do. That the, the goal is to make them yeah like catchy on some level, but also like. On a visceral level, make them make you take you somewhere, make you feel something, and make you almost like there's a little bit of angst and then always the un underneath, you know, there's always a little bit of a like it's not 100% just happy, there's a little bit of there needs to be some emotion in the yeah. song, yeah, sweet and sour, exactly, exactly. You know? So that's the key, I think, to writing like a song that people will sing. And, and the test for me is like if you play for somebody and by the second, maybe last chorus, they have to sing along, yeah. you know, so that's that's the test. So you better sing, sing along later or live. That, yeah. Hey, you know what? The ultimate test is when it's you live. Is when you play somewhere and nobody knows you, or like you're playing a festival and there's people that they know you. They're like, oh, I'm not sure about these guys, and you gotta convince them all to, you know, that's sort of been our specialty, that to go on stage and kind of win people over. You know, that's that's it's always exciting as a band because it makes you work harder, it makes you put on a bigger show and play harder and you know play louder, and and I think that's that's a cool thing. You embrace that challenge. Yeah, we love festivals. Yeah. For that. Oh, I love it. Oh, it's amazing. You know, because you play. Some are your fans. Some don't know. Some are just curious. They're just like literally just standing there yeah. and if you get get those guys to bob their heads then you're having yeah. a good time you when know? you see them change that's exactly. a, that's a great yeah, like yeah. like the best thing is when there's a guy in the front row like <laughs> yeah. i'm just waiting for my, my my favorite band i'm just here holding my spot and then by the like fourth five song he's like <laughs> that's when you know you best win. feeling yeah ever. you know best feeling now your upcoming fifth album it's taken quite a while like a year and a half to to do it so it's always frustrating that period between wrapping it and it coming out but has it been even more so this time because well, of we how long for it now it's yeah. called it's gonna be called the Canadian democracy <laughs> It's yeah, taking pulling my leg. reference to the Chinese democracy. Taking yeah, no, I mean, it, it, it is taking a while, but I think I think I think it's for the right reasons that it's yeah. taking a while. You know, we want to make sure it's awesome. We're just finishing up a couple of songs, and you know, trying to catch some featurings here and there, just making sure the right songs are there in the right order, and hopefully it'll come out. You know, maybe before the end of the year, if not early next year. And when it's meant to be out. Exactly. Yeah. You, know, you, know, you know, like we don't put out a records often. We do take time because. It, for us, it's like they're a statement. They're not just like something you just pop every year. It's like we're maybe it's a little old school in the way that we think, but it has, everything has to be perfect and every song has to be great. We wrote over like 75 songs for this record, and we're gonna keep like 12 or 13. So you know, like we're we really want we don't want to let our fans down, and we won't don't want to let ourselves down because we don't get like maybe back in the 70s or 80s. Yeah, they're building like a new stage. Uh, a new TV station. <laughs> like in the in the seventies or eighties, a band could afford to have a record that was like okay, and they. But now it's like every record has to be. It's like you you kind of um, you play your whole career on on every record, and it's important for us. We love what we do. Yeah, we've been doing it for fifteen years, and we want to keep going. We want to keep doing this until we're forty, fifty. So we gotta put out a good good song. It all it's all about the songs. You want to be proud of the work you do. It's gonna be your legacy. So you know. Totally. Exactly. Well, now we have kids, so yeah. it's like we have. You know, you know, I think about that. Like you don't want like. Man, Dad, like, what was that fifth record really you guys, sucked? It's so embarrassing. Yeah. You guys, you know, in 2015, you guys went that great then. It's like, now we were awesome all the way. You know what I'm saying? It's important. That's the legacy. You're right. Yeah. And I read that you try and do a lot of collaborations and things like that, but you always just end up hanging out with the bands and having fun. Have any of them actually made the cut, do you think? Any well, of the. Well, you can see it in the Boom video actually that just came out. Like, yeah, everybody's loads. in it, yeah. you know? So yeah, that's pretty some, awesome. We had some really good cameos yeah. on that. Yeah. You know? from really good friends like you know Fears of Vell and All Time Low and all that Paris, but blah, blah, blah. we tried to write some song on this record with some of our peers like that and for whatever reason uh, a lot of them didn't make the record they were, they were, they were like good song but they're not like good enough yeah. but we had a great time writing them with the, you know, our friends so it's kind of like you know you get every day you, you never know what's going to happen right you kind of show up and you can write the best song of your life or you can write like an okay or a mediocre song you don't know you just have to try so you know that's the thing in every but in everyone's job you have good days at work you have bad days at work you can't control it so you just got to go with it yeah yeah, pretty no. much like it. Totally. That's I, exactly it. I agree with that. Yeah. So we have fewer good days so, than bad days, but the, our good days so it's are like for amazing you, like, days, you know? you know? It's like for you right now. Like right, like right now is a pretty tough amazing. moment, but yeah. you'll get over it, you know? Exactly. It'll be okay. You'll have it's a, really the bad. next one will be a better interview, you know? That's right. This is my first one of the day. So. Really? Yeah. Nice. Okay. 
So it's only trying, down, it's trying only to top down downhill from here. Downhill from here. Oh, don't That's say that. That's glory. Don't confuse them. <laughs> Now, just to finish up, you played at the APMA Awards. I yeah. think that was like the exclusive performance, wasn't it, of the single? It was. That was the yeah. first time we ever played Boom Live. Yes. That's it was, got to be nerve-wracking. It was awesome. Yes, it was. Yeah. Honestly, like that's pretty much the only reasons why we still get nervous getting on stage when we do like something completely new. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so we're going to play Boom tonight, and now it's going to be awesome. No, not nerve-wracking at all, but it was cool. People loved it right away. and it's, Yeah, we got to perform with, uh, yeah. with Mike from um, MXPX. MXPX. Well. Oh, a friend of yours. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah. We played one of his songs, actually. That was a lot of fun. One of the first tour uh, we ever did with my first band with Pierre and I, we had a, a band when we were teenagers, was opening up for MXPX across Canada. So it was like a full circle kind of thing. It was dope. Nice night though. Yeah, he's yeah. great. We, we love him and they're, they're like, they're one of those kind of like very seminal band of our scene, you know, so it was cool to do something with them. Yeah. My friend has an MXPX tattoo actually on him. There you, there go. you go. Good taste, good yeah. taste. Well, I'm going to let you go now so you can actually try and see some music perhaps. Awesome. Sure. Yeah. Nice. Lovely to meet you and have a great Pleasure. show tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.